it's a dial in not a webinar so dial this phone number and hit that extension and you will be connected live with all the participants that uh, dial in okay and that's only for live attendees so if you're here on the live webinar then good for you if you're not then try and catch the next one because you can be part of that live coaching session so first of all I'd like to thank you probably gonna talk for about a half hour to an hour and um, answer any questions that you have afterwards in the conference call okay if you do have any questions that you want to email me you can always email me at mymarketinghotline at gmail.com and if you see a chat window below you can always put them in the chat window and that will email them to me directly if you need to get off the presentation and go do something then don't worry there will be a recording and you can always review that later okay so our agenda today what are we going to talk about well we're going to talk about Google and Bing and why you need to use them and how to get started with them so first of all I'd like to do a little poll and ask you have you ever used Google or Bing webmaster just a yes or a no would be fine I just want to get an idea of kind of what level people are at and um, in their usage of Google and Bing webmaster you can say uh, just started or very experienced whatever you want to say there just kind of give me an idea okay so what is webmaster well there's a reason that Google and Bing called these tools webmaster because it's the tool that the webmaster uses to speak to the search engine okay if you want to tell Google or Bing what's going on with your website then this is the tool that they've created for webmasters to let them do just that it's also a way for Google to let you know about errors that may be on your website and it's going to give you insight into how your website is being searched and found on the web so the first steps you're going to take are, first of all you're gonna see if your site is even indexed yet so you can do that by using the site colon your domain dot com on either website on either search engine okay or pretty much any search engine and then you want to decide do you want the world to know your website as a www domain or a non www domain they're technically two different domains so you need to decide how you want to publicize and promote your website I personally use the non www version just because it's easier to type and you, you don't really need the www okay and you need to have your website structure in place and some content in place before you do this because one of the things that this is going to allow you to do is submit your pages directly into the search engine with without even really being looked at by Google I mean yeah they're gonna look at it but they're giving you a chance to submit your pages directly into the search engine and see how they do okay so you definitely want to have content on your pages and I already kind of talked about this but basically you want to uh, use webmaster because it's gonna let you get direct access to the search engine team and see if there's any errors in your pages and get insight into your website okay so the essentials are you want to verify your website and tell the search engine that it's yours and then you want to submit a site map and that's pretty easy to do there's tools that help you do that and then you want to submit new pages but I put a beware there because you don't want to submit pages until they're ready for submission you want to make sure they have good content on them and that the public is going to get something from your web page because if it doesn't do well then it's gonna fall out of the index and then eventually come back in so uh, if you see pages that 
appear quickly and then they disappear, then this is why. Because basically Google allows you a brief uh, instance of time, you know, at the top of the search engine, at the very beginning when you submit your page, just to see how it does. And if people are searching for your topic and they find your website and they interact with it and they they comment and they do all kinds of things, then you're probably going to stay in the search engine at that level. Um, it's very likely that you'll drop out and then be re-indexed later. So that's just a little thing I learned in doing my research for this presentation. So you really want your web pages and your website to be ready before you submit it to the search engines, okay? And then you definitely want to come back and check and update uh, the Google Webmaster and your page regularly, okay? So how do we verify a website? Well, there's many ways to do it, and we'll take a look at that. But the, the best way that I've found is to just use a simple meta tag that they give you. It would look like this, and you just stick it in your head of your uh, index.html. So right on the front of your website, and just stick that in the head section of your website. You can use, also do this with um, WordPress. It's very easy to do, so um, I'll be showing you how to do that. And then you want to create a sitemap. Well, if you're using WordPress, there are lots of tools out there that will help you create a sitemap. Just do a search in the plugins area for um, sitemap, and you'll find a ton of them. I'm trying out the Yoast WordPress SEO plugin on this website. I've tried different ones on different websites, so just to kind of see how they, they work differently. And it works pretty well. I like it. Then you can get into advanced rich snippets or schema data, and that helps you identify your website a little bit better to the search engines. So you'll notice here on uh, this page that my photo appears here in the search listings and my name and all the regular information. This is all because of the rich snippets data. And then also the, the, the schema data that I've applied to my website uh, name and address and telephone number identifies this information as a local business. Okay, this is part of the schema.org, and this is an industry standard for labeling data to easily be found by search engines and identifying it. So they have stuff for um, all different types of businesses, um, all different types of data. So I chose the local business um, schema template, and I applied it to my website information. So this is the name, this is the address, and then this is the phone number. Okay, and I'll show you how I did that. And then you want to submit your pages to the search engine. And these are the links that you would use to do that. Uh, you can either submit it just regular, or you can go into Webmaster Tools, which is what I recommend, and submit it there, because that's going to kind of give you feedback this one doesn't give you feedback, and this one doesn't give you feedback. It's just a kind of a generic link that they put out there in the public. You want to use the tools at Webmaster uh, in the Webmaster tool. Okay, so this is some information about Bing Webmaster. So if you want to learn more, you can go to these URLs, and you can learn more about Bing Webmaster. These are the blog and the video. Um, tutorials that they have and then this is the Google Webmaster uh, YouTube channel and blog and you can go there and learn a whole bunch of information about Google Webmaster and Bing Webmaster. This is a screen snapshot of some information that was presented by Bing and this is kind of like a, a, a checklist of things that you want to do to make sure that you look good in the search engines. 
and um, it may not be very readable. It's kind of fuzzy even on my end, but it kind of gives you an idea of the things that you need to look at, okay, or be striving for with your website. So we're going to jump right in and look at a little demo here of the tools. So if you go to bing.com forward slash webmaster, you'll get in here. If you don't already have a live Microsoft Live account, then you'll need to set one up, and then you'll be able to create a login and you use that information as your login for Bing Webmaster. With Google, if you already have a Google account, then just go to Bing uh, Google Webmaster, and you should be able to sign right in. Okay. So, what you need to do with both of these websites is you need to add your site. So here on Bing, it's a simple add a site button right there. And once that comes up, you would type your URL in here. And then you can add your sitemap at the same time right here, which is pretty nice. Okay, Google doesn't allow you to do that. So over here on Google, you'd have to say add site. And then you add your website. And let's just say uh, test.com. And then once you add your website, it's going to ask you to verify it. So um, one of the ways to verify it is using your domain provider. And over here, they have a whole list of domain providers. So basically, it's going to uh, ask you to put in your, your name and your password and you know do some certain things down here. Uh, this is kind of a complicated method. So what I recommend you do is come over here to alternate methods and click on HTML tag and just grab this tag and stick it in one of your web pages at the head section and then that should get you verified pretty quickly okay you can also download this HTML file and then upload it to the root of your domain and with an FTP client and then that would also get you verified pretty quickly so basically what you're doing is you're just telling the search engine that yeah I own these and here's my proof I just put this file or this tag there so you can read it and then what you do is you come down and you say verify and that would verify that you own that okay so I'm not gonna do that for this website because that's just a test name I put in there <coughs> and let's go down and delete this test okay so you notice here I have uh, acephotoandvideo.com and I have www.acephotoandvideo.com. Well, you want to let Google know which one you prefer. So what you need to do is add both of these names. You'll only have to verify it once. And then if you go into this website and you go to site settings over here in the gear, you can tell Google what your preferred domain is. So do you want it to appear as www or do you want it to appear as non www? I choose the non www, okay? Uh, you just set that once and you're good to go and you don't have to deal with that anymore. Uh, some web hosting companies take care of this for you um, but I always say it's a good idea to put it in here and that way Google knows for sure which one you prefer and then you don't ever have to go into this one it's basically just a clone of this one so when you go in and look at your website data just click on the one that you selected as preferred you can't get rid of the other one though because then it'll be broken so just leave it and just ignore it okay so when we go into our site we were in the site dashboard and here we can see any errors that are occurring. We can see our top searches here. And we can see any sitemap issues. So let's look at search queries real quick. Now this is a new website. I just put it up a couple weeks ago. And it looks like I was found in one search query so far. If we go down here, uh, let's, yeah, down here. 
it shows headshot samples was the search term and it, it was eight impressions uh, it was uh, appeared eight times and no clicks okay and average position of 97 which uh, I'll be improving on that uh, for sure and the top web pages we can click on that and we can look at that so here we can see uh, the blue is impressions and then the red is clicks so here we can see we got a couple of clicks and then down here we can see the pages that are most popular and how many clicks they got average position in the search okay so that gives you an idea of what's going on you can see who links to your website so here you can see all these different um, websites link to my website okay probably most likely links that I put out there all right internal links probably don't have to worry too much about that um, let's go over to search appearance because this is where we look at the rich snippet data okay and let's just jump over here and kind of show you the same thing in Bing both of these tools you can pretty much do the same things in so here we can see that um, I appeared in search 41 times pages crawled 63 crawl errors okay uh, pages index 44 uh, this is my sitemap okay that I submitted it's still pending I just submitted it yesterday again um, not sure if I showed you how to do a sitemap over here so let's go back to Google index and uh, no crawl it's under crawl and sitemaps so here on Google it's kind of buried and you have to click on add sitemap and then use your sitemap name here I've already done this so you can see my sitemap name is right here and it's still pending I submitted it uh, earlier today and how do you create a sitemap well let me jump into my dashboard and I'll show you mine it's pretty much automatic um, I installed the plugin so I went over here and I installed the WordPress SEO plugin and then over here in the plugin settings there's not really much to do um, I don't think I really changed any of this I may have checked off a few of these so install whatever tool you want I installed the Yoast WordPress tool um, it'll just create the XML file for you and it'll show you the name of it so here's the name of it and then you can just submit that to your search engine so you just copy you know copy that URL and then you can paste it right in so submit this one takes a full URL so in that case I would need to grab the full URL and then submit it right here and then in Google it just takes the last part of the URL it's already got the domain so basically I would just add that part right there okay and submit it and then you're done with that part that's pretty much all there is to it now every time I add new pages over here in my WordPress if I add a new page then I want to go submit that sitemap again and let Google know hey this page is out here it's added to my sitemap it's available okay so every time I add content I go into Bing and Google and I resubmit if you go down here and you click on this it's gonna allow you to resubmit the sitemap so I resubmit it over on Bing um, I think you just have to submit it again let me look here Yeah, I think you just need to submit it again, if I recall correctly. Okay, uh, let's go to sitemaps. Okay, here. So if you go into the configure sitemap setting, then you can click on the checkbox and hit resubmit. Okay, 
so you can resubmit it. They, they both basically work the same, they're just a little bit different. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to get your schema data set up. So if you go over here to in Google, you go to search appearance and structured data. This is the rich snippets testing tool. Uh, nope, that's not it. Let's look here and see. No, oh, that's not it. I'll find it here. Uh, well, this is part of what I was looking for, but it's not everything that I was looking for. Um, okay. Um, the easiest way to find that tool that I was looking for is just go to Google and type uh, rich snippet testing tool and it's actually part of Google Webmaster but I don't know why I couldn't find it on the menu okay so I just searched on Google and found it and here you can put in ace photo and video dot com and do a preview on that and then here it'll show you if you have your authentication set up correctly it'll show you the authorship for this page okay so all this stuff we covered in the Google authorship webinar so if you don't know how to do this go back to the Google authorship webinar and view that now one of the additional things I added since then was the schema data for local business. Okay, that's not part of the Google authorship. That's part of the additional stuff that I added to my web page. So let me show you what I did. I came over here to plugins again, and I added this plugin here, which is item prop WP for S. ERP in SEO rich snippets. So this is a very simple plugin. There's no options um, or settings for it. You just add it and basically it creates it it creates some some meta tags inside your code and it formats some of your information correctly for the schema or per the schema uh, guidelines so you don't even really have to know what it's doing just add that and it'll help and then the other thing that I did was over here in my uh, widgets um, let me find it in my widgets under my company information my contact information. Let me copy this and go into text editor. Come on. And my editor is being very slow. Okay, so I won't use that. I'll just look at it here. Okay, so here you see I have a div and an item scope and an item type, and then it says schema.org local business. And then here I have a span item prop name and then the name of the company, Ace Photo and Video. So basically the schema definition defines all of, the, all of this formatting. And then what you do is you simply just take your right information and you put it in here. So 
I just looked this up on the web and kind of found out what the format was from schema.org and then I created this little snippet of code and I just put in my information so the name of the company I put in the address uh, I put in the city the state all that the phone number so this basically is a is a meta description of the information that it's holding and the information that it happens to be holding is my business information so it's the local business information so when Google or Bing search the website they're gonna say oh look he's got local business info schema and then you know they can look at all these pages that have that info on it and they can tell what it is it's it's a lot easier for the search engine to figure out what that information is if I tell them what it is if I say hey look this is my business information this is not just some random phone number this is my business phone number and when they're trying to organize data to be shown to people on the on the web or maybe on their smartphone they can say oh well this is a local business and this is their contact information and they can provide that information right to the user so basically what you're doing is you're trying to make it easier for Google and Bing to serve up your information in the appropriate way that's all they want is they want you to help them serve up good information so we need to structure our data in such a way that it, it helps them do that and if you do that then you're going to be found so this is very simple it may look complicated but you're basically just taking some HTML code and you're sticking it in there instead of just typing your name you got to put a little more info around your name okay instead of typing your telephone number you're gonna put a little more info around your telephone number and that's as simple as that okay and then when you see it on the web page it looks just like normal it looks like this but it's got all that wrapper around it which lets Google know what this is okay same thing over on uh, on Bing if you go down to diagnostic tools I believe and you go down to markup validator and we'll enter a URL and we'll validate it okay it's telling me here the type of data is schema.org article okay um, it's shown me the name of this is the page information so this is an article okay and it's shown the date published uh, what it's about all that information the author see there's my Google authorship and then down here it's showing the type of uh, data which is local business that it found and here's the local business information that it found okay and then here's some additional open graph data I believe this is created by that other plugin that I showed you okay and also when you look at your blog you're gonna see a little bit different information here when you look at your blog you're gonna see uh, the micro formats data which um, this is the V card information about who created that blog post uh, here's the local business information okay so um, if we look at an individual blog entry then that's interesting as well let's go get an individual blog entry and put that in there and validate it so this shows the schema article information the description the author the URL the name all this date published date modified okay this is all information that Google and Bing love because they know you know when it's been modified who who wrote it and that gives them great information to to serve up in the uh, search engine
Okay. Um, the other thing that we want to look at is errors because that's very important. And I was in here yesterday looking at some stuff and I found some errors and I left some of them because I want to show you. So let's go in here to crawl errors. Okay, so see here, uh, I've got some crawl errors, right? It's saying seven not found, okay, from a desktop. You can say also from a smartphone or from a feature phone. Uh, I don't know exactly what the difference between those two would be, but um, it's showing here that I've got some 404 errors, okay? So let's just look at this one right here, the contact us error. It's saying it was last crawled on 3.9, and it couldn't find this page. It got a 404 error. So let's check it. And sure enough, this is giving a 404 error. So we, what we want to do is we want to fix that. So this is most likely an old page from my old website, and it was already indexed in Google, and now it's erroring out. So what I want to do is I want to bring up FileZilla and if you're hosting on WA you may not be able to do it this way you may have to do it another way but this website is not hosted on WA and I can go in and create what's called an HT access file and the HT access file lets you do redirects so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down into my code here and find my HT access file. There it is right there. And I'm gonna edit this file. And hopefully this is gonna work because my editor was being really slow before. But we'll just give it a minute. So we'll go back in and look at some other errors here while that's coming up. Okay. So you can also look at where it's linked from. So it's linked from all these pages. So these three pages are driving people at this page, and this page doesn't work. So that's not good. So we need to fix that. So let's go back over to our editor. Okay, this came up. So this is a bunch of garbly gook, and I don't really expect you to understand all this. I'm just going to show you basically how I fixed it. So I'm going to do a redirect, and I should probably really be doing a redirect 301, but right now I'm just doing a regular redirect uh, because I may, I may direct this somewhere else later. So I'm going to copy this page that isn't working, and I'm going to stick it right in here. And then I'm going to take out this first part. Okay. And then I want to send them to my new contact page. So let's go over here to contact us, take that, and put it right in here okay so now if they go to this page they're going to be redirected to this page and you can also do this in HTML um, if you have an old page and you want to redirect it to a new page you can put a redirect HTML uh, link in the HTML page and it will redirect but this is a smoother uh, more, more low-level way to do it, which I prefer, uh, and I can do this because it's hosted on my own server. So I just saved that, and now let's go back to here, and let's refresh this page, and now you can see that it's shooting over to the new contact page. So that error has been fixed, so what I want to do is come back into here and say mark as fixed. Okay, so mark is fixed, and I just fixed that error. Now let's say I want to 
introduce that page into Google uh, as a new page. Well, what I could do is I could come over here and say fetch as Google. And then I can also put that URL right here, okay, which is um, acephotoandvideo.com forward slash contact us. But really, I probably want to put the other, um, the error page, right? So let's go back to my redirect and grab that code. And then we'll go over here to fetch as Google. And I'm going to put in that old page. And I'm going to say fetch. So this is how you add stuff directly into Google. Okay. Remember I told you in the beginning there's two ways to submit. Uh, one way is a generic way. And the other way is directly inside Webmaster Tools. That's this tool right here, Fetch as Google. And there's also Fetch as Bing Bot. So I'll show you that in a minute. So here is the new page that I just told Google to fetch. Okay. It used to be broken. I just changed the HT access file and told it to point at the correct HTML file. And then I fetched it. So Google said, yep, I was successful at fetching and I'm going to submit it to the index. Okay, and I'm going to submit just this URL and I'm going to say okay. So now basically I told Google that hey I fixed this page, I resubmitted it, it's all checking out now so you know continue going to that page basically. That's what I just told them. Okay, so that's why you want to go in and check regularly uh, any errors that you may have in the crawl error section. Okay, let's go over to Bing and see what we got over here. Let's go over to Messages. And I'm not as familiar with the Bing interface because I haven't used it as long. Uh, maybe it's under Reports. Okay, crawl information. That sounds like the right place. Yep, looks like we got some errors here. We got eight of them. So these are all the 400 to 499 codes. So this one here is giving us an error before. Let's check it now. Since I fixed some of these yesterday, they may not be. Yep, it's still, still an issue. So let's go ahead and fix this one. I'm going to go into my HT access file. I'm going to grab this redirect code and put it right here. And then I'm going to grab um, just this and put it here. I'm going to take that out. So now let's save that. And let's say yes. Let's go back over here and refresh this page. So now that old page is going to the correct place now. Okay. So now in this one, I'm not sure if I can tell Bing uh, that I fixed this or not. Doesn't look like I can. Just kind of I'd like to be able to check that off, but it doesn't look like I'm able to do that in Bing. Um, at least not from my initial investigation here. So um, <clears throat> I can check another one, and I can come in here and do the same thing. Okay, that one's. Um, got an error so I could go fix that I'm not going to fix all these right now but you can see here that these are all my old pages from my old website before I transitioned it into um, into my new domain so all those need to be fixed 
So that's another important aspect of Google in Bing Webmaster. There's also lots of other great information in here. Um, I'm not going to dig too deep into this. I just wanted to kind of get you going, and we can always do more later. So let me jump back into the slide set here and see if we covered all the essentials, because uh, that's basically what I wanted to do. Um, we verified our site. We submitted our site maps. We submitted new page links. That's how I, I showed the fetch. Let's go back over and do it in Bing. So let's go to, um, let's say configure. It's probably the right place. Yep, submit URL right here. So let's submit that broken URL and let Google know that we fixed it. Okay. So I'm going to take this one right here, which was the broken URL, and I'm going to put in the beginning part and then the end part, and then I'm going to submit that. Okay. And you notice up here you have 50 um, submissions per month with Bing. Uh, I think it's about the same with Google. And then so many per day. So you want to use these sparingly. Um, but at least Google knows now that I fixed this. I mean, Bing knows that I fixed this. I can launch that link and it goes to the right place. So that's all good. Okay. So uh, let's go back to our slide set. Okay. So I showed you how to submit new pages. But like I said, beware. Make sure those pages are ready to go, ready to be seen by the public and interacted with and all that. Okay, you don't want to submit under construction pages. You want to basically have them ready. And then uh, come back and check regularly for errors and messages from Google and Bing because they'll tell you what's wrong with your website. Okay? So I've got a few recommended um, items here. As you know, I do affiliate marketing, and the way I support my marketing hotline is with affiliate um, products. So these are some related affiliate products that you may find useful. Um, these are some recommended books that I found in my research. These were actually written by Dwayne. Um, I don't know his last name. Let's go check his last name. He's the Bing, the Bing guy. You know, the one of the the main guys over at Bing, and <coughs> uh, let's see. It says Matt Bailey there. That's not that's not him. Uh, let's check this one here. I know he worked on both of these because he mentioned it in his article. Uh, no, I don't see his name here either. Um, but anyway, it's the Dwayne is the guy over at Bing. I just watched some of his videos, and uh, these are some books that he mentioned that he worked on. Uh, so I would think those are pretty good. I've not read them, but I will look into them. And then here's another. Um, Oh, no, actually, these are his books right here. Uh, these are books that he recommended, written by someone else. And then these are his books here, uh, Turn Clicks into Customers and How to Make Money with Your Blog. So these should be really good books. Uh, these may be a little bit more on the entry-level side, but these are definitely um, the meat of things when it comes to optimizing your blog and getting traffic. And he would know how to do that. Uh, this is another recommended uh, product that I use, which is called Google Apps. Uh, you're probably familiar with Gmail, right? Uh, you probably use Gmail all the time. But one of the cool things that Google has is uh, Google Apps, which basically is all the apps that you're used to which is Gmail and Google Docs and um, uh, Google Drive, 
uh, all those tools, but what they allow you to do is put it under your own domain name. So you see here I have my logo up here, and all my mail comes from um, studio at Ace Photo and Video. So it doesn't come from Ace Photo at Gmail, it comes from studio at Ace Photo and Video. So if you want to look more professional and not be using a Gmail account, then you can go to Google Apps and you can sign up basically for Gmail but under your own domain and then you hook up your domain to Google servers and then all your mail gets routed through Google um, just like it, you know if you're using Gmail but it's your domain mail uh, that's really cool and then all your Google Docs and all your calendar everything is under your corporate umbrella and that way if you want to add employees then you can just give them an account so it'd be Steve at Ace Photo and Video or Susie at Ace Photo and Video um, so it's basically a corporate IT solution for any small business that wants to have Google handle their mail and their storage and their cloud data and all that um, and it's relatively cheap it's like four four or five dollars a month per user so for the amount of stuff you get it's a, it's a great inexpensive solution and I've actually got uh, some free codes that will get you a further discount so if you're interested in using those codes that I have shoot me an email and I'll send you one of those codes and get you even better discount okay and um, as always if you'd like to join my free WordPress web design course then you can click on the link here and you can uh, join that course okay so with that I just like to thank you for attending the live presentation here about Google and Bing webmaster and I'd like to uh, invite you to attend the live uh, teleconference coaching call right now so dial in to this number 661-673-8600 when it asks you to put in the extension code put in 845-221 followed by the pound sign and I will be online with you shortly okay so thanks for coming and I'll see you next week and I'll see you on the teleconference right now bye bye